Hello folks! This video has been a long time in the making. A couple months ago I took up an interest in RC helicopters and it wasn't long before I wanted to do something a bit more advanced than just flying circles around the living room and entertaining the cat. One night I was whiling away my precious time on this earth watching random crap on YouTube, as you do, when I ran across an awesome video of an RC firefighting helicopter dropping water from the air just like the real thing. Now I thought this was really cool and I wanted to have a go at it myself, but then I found out how much those big helicopters cost, and yeah, no, that wasn't going to happen. However, I had just bought a much smaller helicopter, a Blade 120 S2, so I decided to use that. Helicopters are a critical component of modern firefighting. Unlike any other type of vehicle, they have the ability to hover, take off and land in remote areas, lift heavy objects, and tolerate weather conditions that would ground most airplanes. There are several ways helicopters are used to help put out fires. One of the most common is a device called a Bambi bucket. It's a large, flexible container that hangs from cables below the aircraft. The pilot dips the bucket in the water to fill it up, then closes the valve at the bottom and lifts it back up, scooping up anywhere from 200 to over 2,000 gallons of water, depending, of course, on the size of the bucket and the lifting capacity of the helicopter. After scooping up a load of water, the helicopter then flies out over the fire, opens the valve at the bottom of the bucket, and dumps the water on the fire, before going back to the water source for another load. The big advantage of these buckets is that they can be refilled from a wide variety of water sources, including swimming pools in residential areas. Any water that the helicopter can safely reach is fair game, and while airplanes need an open stretch of water to scoop it up, helicopters can maneuver in much tighter spaces surrounded by obstacles and access water sources closer to the fire. This kind of precision flying is a difficult task for even the best helicopter pilots, and it's one of the most hazardous flying jobs in the world. That's why I'm going to attempt it with what essentially amounts to a $200 toy and some random junk. My original idea was to build a miniature Bambi bucket using one of those little takeout sauce containers as the bucket and dangling it from a piece of floss. To avoid wrecking my shiny new helicopter in case it all went wrong, I did the first test flight with my quadcopter instead, using two of these little paint bottles in the bucket to simulate the weight of the water. The quadcopter was a good idea. The sauce bucket was not. Almost immediately, it got into a swinging pendulum effect that grew worse and worse until it crashed. Because the bucket was almost as heavy as the aircraft itself, it was a bit like trying to pull a giant trailer with a tiny car, and it soon became impossible to control. The tail wagging the dog, if you will. The pendulum effect isn't such an issue with the real thing, because the bucket is a much smaller portion of the aircraft's weight, but when the aircraft is this light, it becomes a serious problem. Before giving up entirely, I decided to try lifting just one paint bottle with the helicopter. Surprisingly, this worked a lot better. The helicopter seemed to have an easier time than the quad controlling the weight in the air for some reason, and while it did still swing around a bit, it was at least somewhat controllable. If it gets out of hand, you can always fly really low and drag the bucket on the ground to make it stop swinging. The biggest restriction was how much weight the helicopter could lift. This Blade 120S2 can lift about 50 grams of the absolute maximum, and maybe 40 comfortably, so the entire setup, including the water, had to weigh noticeably less than that. That meant the sauce bucket was too big. Instead, I cut the bottom off a paint bottle and made a valve mechanism out of the bottle's own nozzle. The servo is connected to the plug at the bottom, and it moves the outside of the bucket up and down. In the down position, it forms a seal, and when it's up, water can flow out. It holds about half an ounce of water, which isn't very much, but it's the most the helicopter can lift. I put a metal weight on it to help stabilize it, but that turned out to be a bad idea later. It was at this point I ran across an annoying technical issue. The crappy little transmitter that comes with the helicopter can only bind to one receiver at a time, but I needed to control two receivers at once to operate both the bucket valve and the helicopter. 
My Spectrum DX6i, which is a much nicer and more capable radio, can bind to multiple receivers at once, but it can still only control one at a time because it's a little bit too clever for its own good. In the end, I decided to just use both radios, fly the helicopter with the Spectrum, and operate the crappy little one with my foot. Worked. Oh, that's so cool. On the first test flight, the system worked surprisingly well, but the helicopter couldn't lift more than a half full bucket. I tried a larger battery, which helped a bit, but also added even more weight and caused clearance issues under the skids. The problem was that small metal weight I had put on the bucket, which I thought would make it more stable, but this really wasn't necessary and the extra weight was dragging it down. I removed the weight and the helicopter was then able to lift a full bucket. Oh! It's having a hard time, but it can lift it full of water. And dumping. <laughs> that worked so well. When it's empty, the helicopter is reasonably controllable despite the bucket swinging all over the place. <laughs> so freaking cool. Scooping up water is much more difficult because the bucket likes to flop all over the place and it's hard to set it down right where you want it. It's a bit nerve wracking when the helicopter goes really low over the water, and I had a couple of very close calls. Whoops. How wet did that get it? Ugh. That was brief, but it was up to the battery. Honestly, flying around is probably the best thing to drive that, drive that off. It does handle a little wonky with that bucket on it. That. Let's try flying around with a bucket full of water. Oh, that's getting difficult to control. The system was working at this point, but it still had a few bugs to work out. For one thing, the foot-operated bucket control was neither ergonomic nor reliable. It didn't... did it not dump? Oh, crikey, I broke the transmitter. So what happened here? Oh, this just... just fits in a hole. The foot controls had to go, so I took apart another one of these cheap transmitters and taped its guts to the back of my Spectrum DX6i. It's not pretty, but it works like a charm. The other problem was that the servo got wet while scooping up water, and eventually the water found its way inside and messed up the electronics. My initial thought was to replace it with a waterproof servo, but the smallest waterproof servo I could find weighed about 13 grams, which was way too heavy. The original servo weighed about 5 grams. Instead, I bought a much smaller servo and decided to waterproof it myself, using silicone sealer and marine grease. I was hoping, rather optimistically, that this would make it completely waterproof. After another round of testing, with the system working reasonably well, I decided to try dumping water on an actual target instead of just flinging it everywhere. Alright folks, down here we have a convenient swimming pool, and over there we have an enormous dumpster fire. I think I've got my work cut out for me. I'd like to reassure you all that I did not actually buy a copy of the Cats movie for this joke. I just printed out the cover art and stuck it in an empty DVD case. I'll go pretty far for a dumb joke, but 12 bucks for a DVD I'm never going to watch is beyond the pale. Besides, now I don't have to be cursed by owning a copy of the Cats movie, so win-win. Well, I got approximately two drops of water on the target. tail rotor on the kitty litter box. It's okay though. Let's just dump it on cat. There we go. <laughs> that worked. that non 
nonsense out of the way, I decided to put the bucket to a better test, putting out an actual fire. I decided early on not to use real fire for this. Handling fire safely requires being a responsible adult, and I'm only one of those things on a good day, so instead I decided to use this. This is a smoke generator out of a model train. It runs on propylene glycol smoke fluid, which is non-toxic and doesn't smell, and stuffing it inside this die-cast car made for a pretty convincing accident scene. It is a Subaru though, so maybe it's not on fire and the driver is just vaping. Either way, it sounds to me like a job for a water dumping helicopter. So with the help of a little movie magic, the Bambi Bucket was called into action. more attempts than you saw, but eventually I did manage to get some water on the car and fake put out the fake fire. I was so excited that I went back to the pool for another load. And that's when this happened. So in case you didn't see what happened there, uh, I think the bucket must have snagged or something because the helicopter straight up went into the kitty litter bin full of water. And I've taken the canopy off. It did get thoroughly wet all the way up to the swash plate, which is not great, and the tail rotor came off. Toilet paper is the most water absorbent thing I know of that we happen to have in the house. Please let this helicopter survive this. I do not want to spend 200 bucks on another one. All right, tail loaders are really much with tail loaders, but it works, it's alive. Okay, the helicopter is, oops. What the heck was that? I test flew it without the canopy on, and it seemed fine at first, but a drop of water had gotten into one of the servos, causing it to jam on full forward cyclic after a few seconds in the air. On the plus side, after drying it out thoroughly with a hair dryer, it came back to life and the helicopter was totally fine. I super glued the tail boom back in and it was good as new. I got incredibly lucky. This could have been so much worse and I've had several bad incidents with RC aircraft and water in the past, so I consider myself very fortunate this time. In conclusion, do I recommend that you try this? No, absolutely not. This project took way longer than I anticipated and completely spiraled out of control, both figuratively and literally. Even at its best, it was a really difficult rig to use. Honestly, flying a small helicopter around with a heavy weight attached to it is just going to be difficult no matter how you slice it. This helicopter flies fantastic with no bucket attached to it, so that's how I'm going to use it from now on. Anyway, the bucket thing is done, but I do have another cool project coming up with this helicopter, so stay tuned for that. For now, thank you for watching, don't play with matches, and I will see you next time.
Oi.